Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, hello everyone, welcome to Atomic Mass Transmissions Live. Uh, today we're painting up the raging Cajun himself, Gambit. Um, if you joined in uh, Main Stravaganza earlier in the year, um, I don't know why you wouldn't have. It was a great time. And we showed some really fun stuff. Uh, one of the things uh, we were painting, we did some special effects videos. You can go back and check those out on our YouTube. Um, and I started working on uh, Gambit then with his uh, uh, little effect, throwing his uh, playing cards, his 52 card pickup. Um, but I never finished him, so we're gonna finish him today. Maybe finish him today, hopefully finish him today. So instead of me yammering, that's why you're gonna see that started paint. Um, so instead of me yammering, I'm gonna kick it over our mini cam, this one right here, and we're gonna get to painting. Go ahead and start asking some questions. Let's get some conversations going, see what happens with the paint. I gotta go over here, click, and ba-ding. Light. All right, so, Let's go ahead and get his uh, face painted. I have a palette full of paint right here already. Um, I've been painting quite a few things lately. Um, so I got a whole bunch of colors, so I don't think I need to do much. That's probably too dark. I'm gonna need a lighter. I got a few colors I'm missing on the palette that I know I'm gonna need. So I'm gonna go ahead and get those out as well. I do have the, well, what's wrong? The hoodie's rubbing. The hoodie's rubbing. Oh my gosh. There. Tony Konachek, hero extraordinaire, came in to tell me that my hoodie was rubbing my microphone. Um, what were we saying now? I don't even remember. Yeah, I got the name tag right today. I didn't even pay attention last, uh, last, week i just turned on the cameras and started painting and um, never even noticed that i had will schick's name up sorry for the confusion if you know us in real life you would never get us confused fingertips little flesh colored i'm just mixing up a flesh there's no wrong color here you just mix up what you feel is in your heart. Come in from this side. Little dot on the ears. It's got such a dramatic face. I like it. So, how's everyone today? What are you working on? What have you been painting? What are you excited to see coming to Marvel Crisis Protocol? I know I got tons of things on my wish list and tons of things I'm excited for. Okay, let's go ahead and let that dry. Uh, what is Rogue holding in her right hand? Uh, yeah, it's it's like a uh, Sentinel power core. Um, the uh, kind of concept there is we wanted to do something fun uh, with Rogue. Um, really get that like super dynamic um, sort of story going on. This is um, using Cobalt Alchemy. And just play kind of with the character and um, all of our superpowers, right? We, we, we like to try to represent superpowers where we can. And, um, and there's different ways to do that. There's different philosophies to do that. There's different approaches to doing that. Um, and getting characters up in the air is um, always like a fun, like, challenge. Um, so we started playing with some ideas and drew a few concepts um, 
but none of them was really telling the full story of like Rogue the way we wanted to. So we actually toned back uh, the concept quite a bit, even from from what the final was, um, which was interesting. That's an interesting um, note. As that is toned back. Um, but we kept wanting to play with the power set. We wanted to play it show like all sorts of things with Rogue. Um, and so we, Marco came up with this idea of that base topper. So the, the, the little, her base actually snaps like the, you can see the way the base is designed, uh, this raised part, the platform, and then this ring. Um, I actually consider this the base. Um, and then this is the decorative platform. So um, it actually snaps around this ring on any of the small bases. Um, it plugs over the top of that. And so it was designed to be like um, a bit of Sentinel. And she is busting out, you know, if, if, if you're paying attention, you can see a lot of like continuing stories going across uh, the crisis protocol line and elements that tie certain things together when we can and when it makes sense, obviously. I don't like to shoehorn things. I don't want to say every X-Men is going to have Sentinel stuff because there's going to come a point where it doesn't make sense or it doesn't feel right or it doesn't work with the story. So you, you, we kind of keep it open. Um, but we do like to put some Sentinel um, bits on our uh, X-Men's. And so that was just one of those things that kind of continued over into um, her design. So it's it's like a torso um, or a bit of Sentinel that she's like busting out of. The power core is on the top of her hand. It's actually optional. You do not have to apply that. It's um, the underside of it is... Um, is indented like little fingers. So like the underside of that ball is like shaped like the top of her knuckles. So you do not have to put that on um, if you don't want to, you know? So the thing about art, you know, not everything uh, is gonna appeal to everybody equitably. So it's something to always keep in mind. Sometimes you just, you're gonna have a different image in your head and that's okay. That's okay. Let's get some khakis. No, let's get some. I need some very light brown. Let's do some bush chestnut. Sounds like a good fun color. Um, evening all. Hello, evening all. Wargaming dad, how's it going? Working on Blade, need to do some highlight, highlights to base, otherwise he's coming along. That's awesome, Gooey Chewy. Really love that Blade miniature. One of my favorite miniatures um, we've made, actually. Um, once again, just a fun design uh, that we kind of landed on and played with the idea. You know, sometimes you have an idea in your head and you just kind of run with it and it kind of becomes like exactly what you were looking for. Other times you like look for inspiration and you find inspiration from comic panels or, you know, video games or something. Like inspiration can come from lots of different places. Um, you know, and then you have discussions. Like everything is a discussion. We have an amazing team of artists here at Atomic Mass Games. So we like to have a lot of discussions and give, give opportunities for input and feedback you know, we talk about like people standing on a chair to pose. Well, that doesn't mean that's the pose. That's it's that's the discussion part. Like that's the that's where you're throwing ideas at each other, right? And then and then you concept it out and you develop it further, right? But there's always that. You know, now I'm giving a little peek behind a little bit more, right? Like it's everything is a process. Everything is. I know art is a is a journey, you know. And sometimes 
sometimes we come up with something and I'm like, well, that's not my favorite pose, but everybody else is just like, well, that's my favorite pose. It's like, okay, great. Like, it's, um, you know, I have one opinion. Fortunately for me, most of the time I get to override others. But I typically don't do that. That's not the way we want it. That's not what we want to do. What we got? Teasers? What teasers? I wasn't given any teasers, BK. I wasn't told anything about doing any teasers. If he's got some, you better shoot it to me. Because uh, I don't know what you're talking about. See, I feel like I'm put in the hot seat now. Tony Burby walking in with a teaser. I have no teasers. Tony's got no teasers. I'm check your focus. I feel like I feel like I feel like BK just trapped me. He's so tricky, that BK. Dun dun dun. Well, uh, dear wild star, I wish the flame on her bent leg wasn't there. Um, I mean, that's easily carved away. It's 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 plastic, you know. It's it's if you don't like something, you know, change it. You know, it's it's a hobby mentors game. You know, we make no bones about that. It's a hobby mentors game. So, you know, if if you want a hobby and you want to cut the little flame off her leg, um, you know, do it up. You know. You know, I think it's cool. If somebody looks at something and they get inspired and they see something different in their head, you should explore it. You should go after it and you should uh, make it your own. You know, that's the fun about, that's the fun of hobby miniature games. You know, I build a lot of miniatures and I customize them a lot. You know, we're doing a pretty big project right now and I'm customizing the heck out of them, cutting bits off, adding bits. Doing all kinds of stuff. That's the fun of the hobby miniature. Um, yeah, we're not the fun, not the only fun. There's lots of different funs there. And, you know, it's the strength, I guess. One of the strengths, you know, is you can customize and chop stuff up. And it'd be really easy to chop that little flame off. The flame was added actually because we wanted to accentuate that motion, that blur, that comic bookness of it, right? You know, we're always like looking at Marvel Chris Procall and how to increase the comic bookness of the uh, of the the sculpt, right? Of the miniature. When we're looking at, we were looking at, we were actually looking at a, a fresh sculpt today, and we we're talking about like, well, this superpower. How can we interpret it and give it physical form, right? Like these are a lot of the discussions that go on behind the scenes is how do you interpret this power and give it physical form that A, uh, works for production, um, which I think is something that, you know, um, we, we talk a lot about is a lot of decisions are made for production, you know. Um, we, we have to work around very strict parameters for producing in hard plastic. So we have to design around that. We have to design around, um, you know, other philosophies and, you know, just staying true to the characters while also trying to come up with unique ideas to create something that might not be fully represented in the comics. Does that make sense? How can I get one of those fancy painting sets? Uh, as Ghoul Greg Week. This is a. This is not a fancy painting stand. This is a microphone stand. It's literally just a microphone stand. Um, I actually don't like it for painting. Um, I would. I personally would never use it. I know a couple of people have seen the streams and wanted to use it and went out and bought it and they use them. Um, I personally never would because I have no control or. I can't flip the miniature over easy. I and lean it to the side easily, um, you know. But to each their own, you know. Some people like mayonnaise. Some people don't. Um, but this is this is just a microphone stand, just with blue tack. It's 
it's blue tack on top of a microphone stand and a primer lid. There's no no magic here. Uh, Rockwell Blue Tack or Post Putty is enough adhesion to stick a model like this to anything handheld that fits your hand and keeps. Yeah, I actually use double sided tape. You can see this is double sided tape. This is super strong. Um, and that's what I, this is how I would paint with it not being on stream. It's just like this. That way I can turn the miniature like this, right? I can flip it upside down. I can do all kinds of crazy stuff. Uh, for streams, I put it on this microphone stand so I stay on the camera for for you all because I am I will totally go off camera. I agree, BK. You should order me some donuts, 100%. Yeah, it gives her the look of coming out if it doesn't speak to you, it doesn't speak to you. Chop it up. You know what? Maybe I'll chop one up and show you what it looks like. Uh, bah, bah, bah. If a mini walked out panel, what would it look like? Uh, it depends on the panel because I can tell you right now, um, you know, I've seen, you know, discussions about like what, you know, like what pose would be cool for what character and a lot of, Comic book poses um, done for 2D actually don't translate very well in the 3D because um, they're just two different philosophies and uh, two different uh, processes and way of um, interpreting form and such. So Marco and I have actually done a few where we've 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 actually taken. Um, two-dimensional uh, panels um, and kind of like rough sculpts, right? We don't do a full sculpt of it. But you do like a rough sculpt, um, gestural sculpt, and then you look at it in 3D and it just doesn't work, right? A lot of times in 2D, um, artists will uh, break spines. Um, they don't, you know, because it looks cool, right? It's the rule of cool. Um, so we have to think a lot in 3D. Um, so like even some of your most famous and popular and cool comic book poses, if you if you if you take the time and break them down into three di dimension, um, they kind of fall apart for 3D. And that's okay. There's there's nothing wrong with that. They're 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 different, right? It's like it's like it's like books and movies, right? It's they're just different. It's the storytelling approach and um and craft has different things that work different ways um so yeah you first have to get past that you have to get past um um those um so we do look a lot like that and then we have our own personal um sort of studio um things we you know i don't want to say rules because the very first thing I want to do with a rule is break it because um, rules are meant to be broken. And once you learn a rule, that's the best time to learn to break it the right way. Um, so we have some rules about miniatures that are more philosophies that we do like to follow. And then sometimes we break them. Um, but it's, it's um, anyways, two dimension and three dimension, we do like to look at like once we get a good pose and we get it printed out, like a lot of times like we, we kind of do like a cover test, right? Does this look like he's stepping out of a cover? And like when I look at this gambit from right there, that's, you know, to me that right there, that's gambit mini series limited edition cover right there, right? Like that's the shot. You know, you got this dramatic jacket swooshing uh, in accordance to the motion of the cards being flung. Um, you got this bow staff in the back um, that's running on the same line. The, the leg is kicked down, breaking away from the breaking away from his form. And that leg is up. You know, Mar uh, Marvel Comics, a lot of times that leg is, they always kick that leg up a lot, you know. Um, 
you, you bring that leg up instead of having both down. Um, and it's different levels, like sometimes it's way tucked, sometimes it's slightly. It all depends on the emotion and the um, sort of um, story you're, you're trying to convey. So you're, you're always looking at like all that stuff, you know, all that stuff is taken into consideration over and over and over again. We're going to like accentuate this swoop actually. Uh, Scottish paint was the best way to paint yellow. I'm looking at 90s cartoon X-Men and there's a lot of yellow. Uh, don't start with yellow. Start with like a khaki or tan um, or brown depending um, and don't try to paint just pure yellow straight over top of white or black. Just sort of, um, you want to lay down like a gray, or I'm sorry, a khaki or um, a, a light brown, and then put your yellow over top of that. That's a good way to, to cheat that up. Um, I've, done a, I've done a couple of videos. Go back and look, and you can, you can see yellow. Um, you can see yellow. Uh, yeah. Yeah, Dear Wild Stars talking about right now. Um, if, anybody, if anybody remembers what videos those are, you should hook up our friend uh, Scottish Painter because I don't, I'm, I mean, first I'm painting, so I don't have time to go look. Um, I don't want to stop painting. But, 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 do you think Game and Rogue shop for leather jackets? Absolutely they do. Absolutely they do. Um... Yeah, got, oh, see, y'all, y'all are way down there. Guidelines, got, I, look, I'm a big fan of guidelines. I'm a, I, um, when I draw a concept, I tell, uh, so Marco is our sculpting director, um, and I'm the creative director. And if you don't know what those are, I'm, I'm sorry. Um, I, I always tell Marco, I'm like, this, this concept, this, this, this is a this is not a blueprint. This is a guideline, right? So play within play within this shape, play within this emotion. Find find, you know, if you need to push it, that's okay if it's not exactly what I draw or what is drawn on the on the pose. Um, you know, he's an artist and he works with artists and sometimes they're working on the digital and they're like, "You know what? If, Dallas, you have this hand, and it's turned like this, but if we turn like this, you add a little more strength, and um, you can get a little more action out of it. And I'm like, yeah, that's that's what you should do. Go ahead. Um, you know? It, so I'm, I'm a big fan of guidelines. I'm a big fan of just having sort of a... Um, you know, I, I do a lot of... Uh, I talk to... Josh a lot about the different guidelines and one of them is just like I'm not particularly fond of miniatures crouching um, um, it it takes away from what little presence there is on the table for him but sometimes there's just a character in a pose that just needs to be crouching right and, and it works really well you know crunching up the torso uh, or bringing the head down. It's a very specific time and place to do some of those those actions, and they can't be taken lightly, you know. So there, we have a whole list of stuff that we like to use as our guidelines, and they're all malleable. If there comes a time and a place, you break the rule. You know that's the fun thing about art. The best artists learn all the rules. And then they learn how to break the rules and make them make sense. Um, so that's something always we always try to keep in mind. Yeah, guidelines are flexible. Uh, what is Gambit May standing on? Can't make it out. You know the character. Oh, thank you, Alan. Um. So it's just a bit of, so with the foot up, you know, we also want to think about, and we're always developing these philosophies and how to do it better. So we want to give like the foot a little bit bigger bite. So we just have like a bit of effect 
with some kicked up gravel. You know, like, remember, Marvel Crisis Protocol is taken in a city in crisis, right? There's no random rock. There's no random rock. Um, there's, um, there's, a, there's a battle going on. There's, there's, you know, there's Magneto's throwing stuff and there's Juggernaut smashing buildings. So there's no such thing as a random rock. Uh, so, but we don't want to cover bases and stuff, right? If, if I cover the base and stuff, it gives you less room to manipulate the character the way you want it or to, or to customize the base. So the base, we, we, we try to keep it minimum at times. So this is like just a little effect with some gravel kicking up to, to kind of in, first it gives the miniature a bigger bite onto the base for adhesion. Second, it gives a little action. It adds a little flare down here where otherwise it would be pretty plain. So it's just a fun interpretation. Like if you were if you were doing a sketch and you were sketching and you would just put some stuff just blasting up, that's all it is. That's all it is. You weren't a fan, uh, during a while, sorry, was not a fan of Domino's Cross. Um, that was when I really felt like it, it kind of fit breaking the rules. Um, actually, that was kind of inspired by something. Um, you know, that, that pose is literally inspired by something. Um, and we just kind of went with it. There, we, we did a couple poses, sketches for Domino. Um, you know, who knows? We might revisit that character again in the future. And that's the fun of Marvel Crisis Protocol is there are so many different iterations of these characters, right? That's why, like, you know, I see people talking about affiliation lists. I don't have that information. Um, that was outside of my department. Um, you know, these characters a lot of times are just snapshots, right? Like, Magneto, our Magneto is definitely the... You know, this is the Magneto hellbent on domination, right? This is not the Kuroka Magneto, right? This is, this is, that's not, that's not our Magneto right now. Like, will we do that someday? I don't know. Um, but like, a lot of these characters are kind of snapshots. So that's, you know, affiliation wise, that's why you might think someone should be on affiliation, you know? Spider-Man is a great example. This is not... Spider-Man is a very early, young Spider-Man. The core box Spider-Man is a very young Spider-Man. And then we moved into uh, Amazing Spider-Man that represents a more adult Spider-Man, a more mature Spider-Man. Um, so not every character is going to be on the affiliation for every single affiliation that they've ever been presented on. Um or every team they've been presented on in the comics. These are snapshots from Marvel Crisis Protocol to represent a period in time. And what were, what were I talking about? Oh, crap. So that was very much inspired by um, something, and we just kind of ran with it. And I, I, I personally love the casual uh, surf of um, one domino for that. I, I love that casual smirk. And there's just an explosion going on. And of course she is just like, this explosion means nothing to me. This explosion means I'm closer to you. You know, this explosion, you thought you got me, but you, you missed. Yeah. Uh, I, I think it's fun, you know? And like I said, if you don't like it, change it up. Give it your own flair. Do something fun to it, you know? Get some, get some putty or some clippers out. Show us what you got, and you know, you should absolutely share it on Instagram with the hashtag painting protocol. And let me see it. You know, I, I love seeing that stuff. You know, you not liking something doesn't make it bad. It's just, it's just a difference of taste. You know, I don't like mayonnaise, but I don't want to remove it from the store. Uh, when's the new style of character packs being released? That's that's a question that I don't have the answer to. That's oh, there it is, spring summer. Thank you, Atomic Mass BK. Yeah, yeah. 
Everybody's talking about the Magneto now. Steel Water. I don't play MCP, but that was a great looking Gambit miniature. You know what? I'm glad you think so. You know? Pick one up and paint it. You know? A lot of these a lot of these characters are I mean if, even if I didn't work here and even if I didn't play, I'd probably be picking up a whole lot of these and just painting them. Because first off, I enjoy the miniatures. Um, our sculpting and engineering team are just getting better and better all the time, developing new techniques um, and just getting better and better all the time, which is fantastic to watch from inside. Um, I love watching people improve and grow. Um, it's, it's, it's really amazing. Um, and, and being a part of that is something that I just find um, that I'm super lucky to be privy to is watching uh, this team develop and grow um, their skills. I'm sorry, I'm looking for a paint, so I'm, I'm not painting. I'm, I'm hunting for something. Maybe this brown out the green? That should work. Where's gray? Sorry. Oh, that's too blue. I need something a little dull. Leander Gray, Leander. Yeah, and all those new, all those cards, uh, everything will eventually be on that new card format. It's gonna look really, really rad. I'm excited. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, that's the thing about hobby measures, is like, most of the time, you kind of do more painting than you do hobby or do playing, you know. It's just you, it's that's that's just the nature of the hobby mentor painter is, you know, for every hour you spend on on a character, you know, you don't get that many hours playing the game. Um, but the reward is showing up at that game store with that fully painted roster and just getting people excited and just being like look at what I did taking some pride in like your accomplishments and stuff like that and pushing yourself and developing new skills it's exciting but it's just the relaxing aspect of it just the thing that you get to do and relax and then show off you know I'm talking from personal side Everybody, everybody's got to interpret their hobby their own way there's no wrong way I'm just giving my perspective maybe maybe you take something from it maybe you don't that's okay Just using a little blue and gray to start shading these sick leg grooves. So I used a metallic paint on the leg grooves. Now I'm using a non-metallic paint to start shading because as we've learned, if you watched my uh, videos on Metalocity, um, you can go back and Atomic Mesh Transmissions uh, to um, the main extravaganza and you can definitely find some videos on me painting metals and I go all into my philosophy on painting metals it has to do with like reducing the shine in the shadows um, you know even the shiniest metals chrome actually don't shine in the shadows they turn very very black so you kind of carry the same philosophy over all your metals and you get more realistic and cool looking tones Steelwater, yeah, it comes with Rogue. Gambit and Rogue come together in a box. I 
Have you ever thought about? I'm going to tell you. Uh, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not trying to be snarky. I'm. I'm being really honest. A lot of times, if you ask how you thought, the answer is yes. We think about a lot of stuff. It's the timing. It's the timing and finding time. Um. Uh, yeah, a little tactical rock box would be great for me. I would totally. I would totally buy that in a hot minute. Okay, we're just darkening this up now. I do demand stuff daily. It's true. It's true. What was I getting ready to say? I had some. Will we get Psylocke eventually? I mean, Given, uh, Shik and I say this all the time, given uh, the opportunity, there's not a Marvel character I wouldn't make. You know, you never know what the future holds. Every character is someone's favorite. And I would love the opportunity to you know, get that favorite character in everybody's hands. You know, I want my favorite characters and I want you to have your favorite characters. And hopefully, hopefully, you find joy in it when you get it. Oh, a bunch of few first time viewers from a raid. Hello, thanks. Welcome to Atomic Mass Transmissions Lab. We're paying up Gambit, an upcoming miniature for Marvel Crisis Protocol. I need a slug of water. Hold on. Still, I really wish my FLGS carried this. Get on it. Get on it and demand. Uh, demand. Or give them to just order you some. It's usually pretty easy to do. I'm getting a little paint out on my palette. Hold on one second. And the bottle's clogged, of course. Uh, squeeze bottles. It's one of those debates. Squeeze bottles versus pop tops. I'm actually a fan of pop tops. Because I'm about to make a mess with the squeeze bottle. Because, of course, I'm in the paint studio, so I don't actually have all my tools. There we go. Good enough for now. We're going to use a little bit of... What are we blaming Pagani for? I missed it. I was busy opening a dang dropper bottle. I'm going to use a little brown ink to glaze over our highlights and our midtones of our leather jacket. Let's just start turning into that warm, warm leather tone. And then those highlights that we built in earlier will still shine through. We're just going to keep building this up. Oh, the possible paint mess. Yeah, Pagai is a monster when it comes to paint bottles. It's 
So last week I did a little more studio style approach to painting miniatures. And I'm curious if people enjoyed that and would they like to see more of that? Just still using that brown ink, glazing. I really wish I had some reference up. I do not have reference today. And if you know me, you know I hate painting without reference. I can't remember some of the color spots on our gambit. Go a little heavier on the other side to keep it dark. I'm just going to do a several like layers building into this leather to build that texture and effect right we're not trying to rush it we're not trying to one and done it you know sometimes you just got to build build the flavor right it's like cooking it's like cooking a delicious stew right or ragu you need you need to layer the flavors and build it you can't just rush in <sighs> yeah, still water. Pick some up, paint them up. Tag Atomic Mass Games on uh, Instagram. Let us see what you got. Are there going to be writers at uh, Dakin? Is there going to be more uh, Ultimate Encounters like Ultron? Uh, there are a lot of Ultimate Encounters released already and more always in development. Like, it's definitely one of our, here at the studio, one of our favorite, like, aspects of Christ's Protocol is the way the rules are made and our uh, ability to kind of bring diversity to the way the game is played is very important to us. You know, we want to be able to provide um, a lot of options for uh, players to sort of play, you know, your miniatures in lots of different ways so it's very important to us it's it's one of our sort of core philosophies you know to get back to that kind of thing um is we want to give everybody like a lot of ways to play their favorite marvel characters because that's that's what's a that's you know that's what makes marvel fun is like these characters have interacted uh in so many different ways and you know they all have all these different narrations. So uh, sometimes it's it's really interesting for the Ultimate Encounter to kind of provide that way for us to explore another side of a character. Um, I think we got one coming up that people are really going to take a liking to um, um, that shows like another side of a character. So that's a long answer. Sorry. Short answer is yes, more, more ultimate encounters. Always more ultimate encounters. So this is a little black, a little blue mixed together to start darkening in those uh, shadows on these legs. Starting to look pretty cool in my eye. I'm just going to create that real metallic y look. Like I said, with metal, the bright highlights, dark shadows, that's what makes stuff look metal y.
What we got? Dun, dun, dun. Oh yeah, so are we got Deadpool? That miniature is amazing. I've already painted two dead, two or three Deadpools. I can't remember. I definitely have a. Uh, I, I need to paint another, and I probably need to paint another after that. So I probably have like five Deadpools total. I need to paint um, because I kind of want to do. Like I have a pink Deadpool and a, a black and white Deadpool, and so I really need a red classic Deadpool. And then I probably should paint one for my kid uh, who absolutely loves Deadpool. Um, who super approved of the uh, what we did with the Deadpool miniature. Was totally in on that. Was totally glad we got Bob in on the action. Um, and I kind of want to do a Deadpool in white. So, which I guess sort of looks like Phantom X, but I don't know, white Deadpool sounds like a fun project. So, and then I've had an idea for a diorama with Deadpool, but um, we'll see if I can actually get around to it. I got, I got too many, I got too many ideas, too many projects. Uh, not enough Dallas. This is why I want to clone myself. This is why one of my favorite characters is Jamie Maddox. Like, I'm jealous of that superpower. Everybody wants flight and invincibility and to be able to punch the sun out of the sky. And I'm like, I would love to have multiples of myself so I can just do more cool stuff. Thank you. That's what I want. All right, black, turquoise, brown ink mixed together. Uh, plan on working on my brush control by putting the jazz design on all the little drink cups. Uh, brush control is super important. Um, such an important step to becoming a good miniature painter um, you know and in case you didn't know we're always looking for I'm always looking for painters um, I'm always looking for just a reminder I'm always looking for painters um, but when training a new painter one of the very first things you know I look for is um, is brush control you know and one of the first things I like to talk about is brush control you know it doesn't matter it, how many techniques you're taught you know it's kind of like cooking right um, if I if I show you how if I show you a technique and you don't have the knife skills, then the technique didn't matter, right? If you can't julienne the carrot, right? It doesn't matter what technique I show you on how to cook them. So it's definitely like one thing that, you know, it's, it's like a fundamental, right? It's always important to go back and re-educate, re-teach, and constantly practice that. Uh, no matter what level you get to, you know. So brush control is super important. It's, it's 
it's always always something to be practicing. What we got? Yeah, you know, you just keep practicing. That's all it is. Just keep practicing. It's it's not a race. We're not racing. It's a journey. It's a personal journey sometimes. You know, my my miniature painting was definitely a personal journey, and that I was able to eventually. Um, turn into a career and now I don't even do it as a career um, which is the, f the funniest part um, but you know sometimes it's just a personal journey right if it's just a hobby you ain't you don't got I almost said ain't my, my south my south was coming out pretty hard um, you don't gotta be good you know my partner my partner paints purely for fun purely for something to uh, pursue and develop at their pace and no one else's pace, something to relax and do something ridiculous and nonsense at the end of the day. And, you know, that's, that's perfect. You know, you choose the destiny of the miniature. You know, we talk about that a lot. You have to choose the destiny of the miniature. And sometimes the destiny is just looking cool. And because I want to make something that looks cool, you know, that's good enough. It's really good enough. You know, I was just tangenting there. Sorry. We're just using black, turquoise, and brown ink again, as I said earlier. And we're just starting to really slowly shade this leather and get that dark that darkened brown uh, worn look built into it uh, the blue is there or the turquoise is there as a blue to contrast against um, the warmth of the coat um, the coat has a lot of red in it so by adding that turquoise into uh, the black turquoise is of course is a bit blue a bit green so it works really well in that warmth and adds uh, some much needed life to the jacket. So we're probably not going to finish today. I'm moving along pretty quick. We only got a few minutes left. Whoa, Blighted Brush just finished painting Winter Soldier and had officially caught up to the release schedule for the game. This is a good feeling. That's an amazing feeling. And actually, I'm a little jealous. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be perfectly honest with uh, all you wonderful people hanging out and chat with us today. Um, I'm a little jealous. Um, I am not caught up. Um, I, um, I, I got... I have one major left. Like I, I gotta catch up on. I'm a, little, I'm a little behind, but I'll get there. I'll get there. It's always a good feeling, like being able to get those set up those paint project deadlines or uh, goals and hitting them. Um, you know, just remember, an hour a day will change your life. An hour a day will absolutely change your life. Um, you know, if you can just take one hour out of your day that you, you're probably wasting on something else, you know, um, and you can put it into your hobby, you know, it won't be long before you realize, like, how much you've improved. I love seeing... Uh, People post. I get messages sometimes from uh, from our community, and um, you know, one I got fairly recently was they started paying measures for the first time uh, with the Marvel Crisis Protocol core box, which has now been out for what two years, and their newest miniature they painted compared to. The first one, the very first miniature they painted was a Marvel Crisis Protocol. I've been painting this for over, not this, not this one miniature, but I've been painting miniatures for um, 
30 some years um but like seeing that improvement in just that such a short time and 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 being able to like witness it like i mean it's such a such an awesome feeling and such a great thing to be able to witness uh, just somebody just really cranking down and asking those questions um how do i make it better what makes this bad what makes this good um you know, look, and then applying those lessons. I think that's the big thing. Uh, a lot of people don't know how to do is apply lessons or apply criticisms um, and see improvement. Like, that's so awesome. It's so inspiring. You know, it makes me want to be better. It makes me want to ask questions. It makes me want to push myself and develop further and further and further. You know, like I said, it's not a race. I'm not racing those people. It's a journey. It's a journey we're kind of all, you know, you know, we're all on different points of the same path, right? And that's okay. So we just keep painting and having fun and playing games and telling that Marvel Crisis Protocol story on the tabletop. Supporting each other and believing each other. And see where it takes us. See where the future see where the future goes. That was a terrible pin wash. I'm gonna clean that up. See this is why the the stick gets in my way sometimes. I just flip this miniature up and over. But it would look silly for you all, so I'm not gonna do it. I'm just going to manipulate the paint more. Just hope for the best. All right, we're getting close to closing time. So if you have any questions, you have any uh, comments, you got any um, requests for maybe something you want to see painted in the future on the stream, now's the time. Hit me up. Let me know. Remember, every Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday at 1 p.m. Pacific Standard Time is when we stream. Uh, here at Atomic Mass Transmissions. Tomorrow will be some painting with the ever intrepid Will Schick. I'm not sure what he's painting because I don't, I don't, you know, I don't have a schedule. Um, that's not true. I actually, I actually do have a schedule for painting. Um, I just don't remember what what it is. Um, so Will Shake will be on tomorrow, and then uh, Thursday, Thursdays, it's typically our gameplay day, so you can join in on Thursdays and watch one of the many wonderful Atomic Mass games games being played. Questions? We're getting close to the end here. Uh, Stillwater's just having a journey, and I'm jealous. He is just, they are just on the way. Um, cyber Insanity. Are you watering down your ink? Yep, absolutely. I'm using a little bit of water to water down my ink. Just to turn it into more of a glaze. I don't want it super punchy. I want to control it more. So I'm just using a little bit of water. Uh, Yoshi's painting. How does one inquire about an aforementioned painter? Um, what's the best way to do that? What's the best way to do that? Oh, FedEx just arrived. I bet something really, really cool for me to uh, look through and approve. Um, I'm trying to think what's the best way to do that, Yoshi. Uh, you know, go on... Go on Marvel Crisis Protocol on Facebook. Go on the uh, the official Marvel Crisis Protocol Facebook group, and just tag me, like, and 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 I'd be happy to look at the miniatures. Um, love the flesh down contrast paints for leather. Yeah, yeah. Fle I mean, leather is flesh, so a lot of those colors are just naturally 
cohesive to what you're doing with your leather paints anyways they're uh dura wild star um you know they're a lot of flesh tone washes are green red um which green red is definitely a color in uh, a majority of flesh tones across the earth across humankind um their green and red kind of resides within um human flesh tones so you know it works really good for leather um, bum, 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 bum. I like the models with the dynamic poses, but some like King Pen, Kingpin also look amazing. Steel Wire says, um, "Yeah, Kingpin. That's that's like one of those ones. Like philosophically, we talk. I'm I'm talking, and I apologize. I'm, I just got the camera on Gambit. I hope that's okay. I can kick it over to the other side. And get that out of, out of the way. So that like kingpin, kingpin is uh, is one of those interesting things uh, we like to talk about. Like we, we like to have a breadth. Uh, think of a bell curve, right? And you want like extreme dynamism, and you want like um, stoic. And then up here, then you have the bell curve like that, you know. And as with like even with game design, game design, our goal is to like have that bell curve like this, right? Um, with miniatures, you kind of want something maybe not so wide but maybe not so tight but you want like a collection think about a canvas right when you go to an art museum and you're looking at uh think about the most amazing painting um, i know which one i'm thinking about um um sadak and search of the waters of oblivion um there's so much a there's so much action on a piece of canvas and um interest but there's also places for the eyes to rest and that's very important so philosophically, a lot of times um, when we're looking at a miniature, uh, on a miniature, we want to provide places for the eye to we're at rest because this is a canvas, right? The, philosophically, this is a canvas. And then we have something like uh, a box of characters like Rogue and Gambit. You want to think about that as a canvas. And then we think about like X-Men, that wave of X-Men, that's a canvas. And then we think about X-Men as a whole affiliation that's a canvas and then when you think about the game as a whole that's a canvas so being able to like dip those like moments of rest it adds contrast and that's a very important thing that's a that's a word we talk about in painting is contrast 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 um so those characters like kingpin that adds that contrast that adds that moment of uh, rest it adds a place for the eyes to rest it adds a place for you to catch your breath. It adds a moment in the action, especially somebody like Luke Cage. I think Luke Cage is actually a really cool example of this where, um, you know, like I was saying earlier, you have a crisis happening. You know, the streets of New York are, are you know, overrun by, you know, aliens or, you know, whatnot, creatures from other dimensions. And our heroes are, or villains, whatever, are trying to fight them. So you have this, this moment with Luke Cage where, you capture his confidence where he's like, he's in, you know, where he's just like, I'm impenetrable. I'm unstoppable. I'm Luke Cage. I'm, I'm, I'm awesome. But he's also stepping on that steel beam, bending it to show his strength, to, to, to like represent that, that power of power man, right? So like being able to provide like a, uh, like high impact, high velocity, or my favorite word, kinetic um, poses, and then um, bring it down to also, poses that um, present a moment of rest or a moment of um, um, being able to catch your breath it provides such an interesting palette for us to paint with. So, uh, let's see, Rogue go with the scambit. Uh, I painted my Rogue at, at uh, Mini Strive Again, so you should go back and check it out. Um, yeah, I'm totally freehanding all the symbols on the on the on the cards and so i think that's all the questions it looks like and it looks like i went a couple of minutes over and i apologize we started a little bit late but i gotta go to a meeting now so i will put it on this screen and i will say once again check out our check out atomic mass on twitter and instagram for all the latest news information and announcements coming from all your favorite games and until Next, till tomorrow, we'll see you later. Go out and be the heroes you want to be. Ba -da 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 -da.